Joining us, Dane Giroux from the Free Speech Union. Good morning to you, Dane. Kia ora, Michael. How are you? Um, I'm very well. Um, you are Jewish, part Jewish? Can you be part Jewish? Jewish. Well, I, I'm a practicing Jew. Oh, um, well, that's probably, yeah. that's probably fair My enough. Ancestry. Yeah, it's fair enough, yeah. You can't be a... So, to be Jewish, it gets it comes in through the mother's side, doesn't it? Yeah, well, for me, it's it's more the father's side, but... Uh, Does it I, matter? I, well, not today. There, there, there was a saying around um, and during World War Two that if you're Jewish enough to die for it, you're Jewish enough to live by it, so... Yes, and I guess why that... I'm, I'm just speculating, but the reason they said that Jewishness comes in through your mother is because at least you know who your mother is. Well, that's exactly why it would have happened. It's nothing spiritual or sort of weird, wacky, you know, it's no supernatural thing. It yeah. would, have, would have been a practical thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Okay, um, now, sorry, I have two stepchildren, who, or two heads to two children who are Jewish, so, yeah, I have some understanding. Yep. Um, oh, great. And they did their Hanukkahs and all that sort of stuff as well. Um, and did you and we, and, Oh, they went to Jew Camp? I think uh, they not only went to yeah. Jew Camp, they, I think uh, Noah actually ran Jew Camp for a couple of years in both New Zealand and Australia. Okay. Wow. Now, I've, I've got, so I've got no understanding. See, I'm, I've grown up, we used to have jokes about Jews, but that, then we changed them to Scots. You know, it was all about how tight they were and things like that. Um, yeah. But I'm not aware of any of that sort of genuine anti-Semitism in New Zealand. Have you come across it? I think that, I mean, I, you know, I definitely have come across it. I, I think it, uh, it, it's quite interesting. A lot of the, and this is where, and you and I may disagree here, but when you think about the, anti, the anti-Israel movement, for instance, criticism of Israel is completely fine. But you do, well, I, and a lot of us do sense some of the very old, old tropes just sort of seeping into some of that stuff, you know? And, and polluting it in a way, you know, uh, because there's plenty to criticize Israel about. But it, it's interesting that some of those old tropes, uh, they're, they're very durable. They just seem to have uh, never gone away. And, and I don't actually think they ever will go away, to be fair. Uh, we might be going, you know, living through a period where they're sort of flaring up uh, again a bit. Um, and we'll get to Kanye, I guess. But uh, no, they, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll have encountered them. Well, I mean, first of all, you killed my God. So, I mean, you know, of course you should suffer for that. Um, but that, That's exactly right. That was right. I mean, that was the first thing. I mean, the Jews yep. killed Jesus Christ, so therefore bugger you. But the second one, I guess, was that happened first. Now, can I just sort of lead this on? Because I used to teach medieval history. And I was trying to explain yes. this to my staff. My, my um, They said, why do people hate the Jews at one thing? And I said, well... This is what I hypothesized. See if you've got if I've got this right, Dave. The Christians took over. The Romans um, basically bureau- bureaucratized uh, Christianity to help them um, in the later Roman Empire. They didn't mm-hmm. like the Jews because the Jews couldn't be converted to Christianity, and because they killed Christ. As well, that was the thing. So they were always regarded as sort of slightly demonic because. Christ had come from, an, uh, ironically, despite being Jewish, he'd come from amongst them, showing the way they'd rejected it, and they killed him. What are you doing? Now, the Jews, for the next 1,000 years, had pogroms and whatnot against them, realised that they were excluded from all of Christian society, particularly in Europe. Well, we're obviously in Europe. Um, mm. And then decided that they would live in ghettos, um, in the proper sense of that word, and have to look after themselves. They weren't allowed to vote, or, well, nobody voted in those days, really, but they weren't allowed to have any particular citizenship. So they got into, and they weren't allowed to own property, as I understand, either, for there for a long time, either, because they were Jewish. So they got into money lending, and they got into financing, and then they got into commerce, and evolved a culture around money, essentially. Have I got that right? I don't know about... Uh, if that's completely accurate, I, I would, I mean, there was, uh, uh, I don't think uh, Jews chose necessarily to live in ghetto. But, no, but, but the they other, did because the they other... had to, it was self-protection. I mean, well, it, was, well, it was easy to get killed in a village if you were Jewish and the rest of them were Christians and suddenly they blamed you. Sure, but the, 
Sure, but these countries are very, I mean, you know, are we talking about Eastern Europe? Are we talking about France? I mean, these are, I, I think it's, uh, all these countries would have been quite different and they would have operated very differently. Like yes, Napoleon, for instance, uh, he, was very progressive when it came to Jews. Oh, um, listen, but what I'm trying to uh, say is that Jewish became clannish, they became insular, they had their own culture, there wasn't intermarriage to a large degree. Um, and so when, for example, Shakespeare wrote The Merchant of Venice, he was dealing with a Jewish character that all his audience would have known and identified, yeah? Well, p potentially, a stereotype of that character. But on money lending and things like that, there, was, there were limited jobs you could, you could do. No, that's exactly well. the point that I'm trying to make. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 again, that wasn't necessarily a choice. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just saying no. this is how it happened. Um, yes. But then that, so that's fine. And um, and I guess um, when Shakespeare wrote Merchant of Venice, certainly in an English society, um, there was, I mean, at the same time, he had a lovely daughter. So, you know, he wasn't irredeemable. Can I just say, though, that then led to this Protocols of Zion, the Jews are running the world sort of stuff, and then that's permeated right through to this present day, yes? Yes. Um, I, I, could I just say on Shakespeare and, and Shylock, I mean, you can read it as an awful stereotype, uh, and, you know, and Shakespeare is a man of his age, you know. Um, Othello can be criticised in that way too. But, I mean, both those characters have beautiful poetry and, and um, uh, you know, I mean, Shakespeare's just so sublime. I mean, you do see the heart of Shylock. I mean, oh, absolutely. Just, just be, absolutely. You know, just yeah. bleed, you know. I mean, that, uh, I mean, it's a... Oh, no, no, he was, it's just so that you know, in my seventh form, when I was doing um, scholarship English, um, mm. I, I portrayed Shylock, Shylock as my anti-hero. He was, you know, he, he was right up there with Hamlet, in my view. Um, yeah, but he's been, yeah, well, I mean, that, that's about Shakespeare's power, and he was probably smuggling in um, you know, anti-bigotry messaging, really. I, it was a very, I mean, yeah, just so fully rounded, those characters. Yeah, they were. No, it was a wonderful, it was, Merchant of Air is one of the greatest, um, and here they are trying to ban it, being good God. Um, anyhow, yeah. moving on. Yeah, yeah. Kanye West, though, is mm -hmm. a yeah. black recording artist who has assumed international popularity and fame won numerous awards and then his in relationship with Kim Kardashian uh, probably propelled them even further into the public consciousness, certainly in America. Um, mm. He, though, is a very strange man, um, seems to have had a breakdown, renamed himself, um, and has now decided that Jews run Hollywood, the record industry, uh, and things like that, and has been condemned widely as an anti-Semite in that country uh, and because of that has now been banned. Now, you write in your column about how you and your son, who I assume Jewish as well, um, yep. have been devastated by the fact that somebody you've admired, respected and really liked their music of could hate you mm. as a people and a culture. Yes? Yeah. I don't know if I ever really respected Kanye, <laughs> but I appreciated the, his music. I do think in, in that medium, he, he, he is definitely a great, yeah. Right. But, so, but is, so you're, you're the last person I would have thought that would be talking to me now about why Kanye shouldn't be banned from New Zealand radio stations. Mm. Why? Well, why shouldn't he be? Well, because, look, I, I, I do accept that private company can disassociate from whoever they please, you know? Uh, sometimes it's really good business to do, to do that, you know, and, and, we, and we would never, I'm talking for, you know, for the Free Speech Union here, to like try to get involved to say, hey, you know, you can't disassociate from someone that a private company wants to disassociate from. But I think that when you start banning music, because I was talking very specifically about the music, you're actually punishing the fans at that point. And, and I think then you get into real trouble. Then you actually do more harm than any perceivable good. You know what I mean? Because who, who pays for that? And this, and, and this is the thrust of my piece. A, a lot of people who 
a pro censorship. I feel the people that I encounter on Twitter or, you know, that I just get into debates with or just sit down across the table from and, and discuss, a lot of them, you know, their heart is in the right place, but they're not necessarily from communities like our community. You know, um, they're just Anglo-Saxon, you know, people, and that's fine. And like I say, their heart's in the right place. But there is a consequence for censorship. You know, you can't just ban your way to cohesion and, and, and ban your way to no racism. It doesn't, doesn't really work that way. And so by removing his music, I mean, his whole... Uh, he's been inspired by this group called the Black Hebrew Israelites, which is a pretty wacky group over in America. And, they and it sure are. They're a weird well, lot, Really weird. And, and, and there wasn't a lot of press for it here. There wasn't actually even that much press for it in America, which is a bit of a shame. But in New York, about three or four years ago, there were just random stabbings of, of identifiably Jewish people by these, by these um, black Hebrew Israelites. Like, they, they're quite militant and nasty, like, we're seriously nasty. Um, the, you know, the, they, they can get that way. So they've influenced him and um, Kyrie Irving too. There, there's a, a documentary out. Um, uh, and, and they claim to be the lost tribe of, of Jews. They yes. claim to be the real Jews. Yes, just know? to explain to our listeners, uh, the black Israelites are a sect. Um, they actually believe, I mean, it's hard to believe, but they do, that they are the true Jews. Um, yeah. And that somehow you white guys, you've just usurped them from their true, from their true role as the yeah, the, yeah. Um, can I, I don't know what they think we well they might do they um, yeah I mean I don't know whether they think we're fake or we're or we're impossible. I don't know what, what's going on well you're the wrong colour to start um, with yeah 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 that's right and you've got far <laughs> too much money now which is the argument that uh, Kanye West said he actually said mm. that um, basically Jewish people that's white Jewish people were exploiting mm. black artists um, and that uh, the whole music industry was uh, under the control of Jewish things. That wasn't so bad. You might get away with that. Um, but then he Marlon said... Marlon Brando said something quite similar, actually. Yes, that's right. Um, yeah. Not, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Uh, but then he put out a tweet, uh, which, you know, this is what happens. You know, I say this to Donald yeah. Trump, that you take his phone away from him. Um, he <laughs> says, I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going death con three on Jewish people. The yeah. funny thing is I actually can't be anti-Semitic because black people are actually Jew. Also, you guys have toyed with me and tried to blackball anyone who opposes your agenda. Um, so Death Con 3 suggests uh, violence and quite significant violence against Jewish folk. Is is that the understanding yeah. I've got from that talk tweet? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, that, I'd read that into it, sure. Right. Okay. And he actually said that KKK had a point about you, I think. Uh, he said that as well, too, in the past. So... Mm. But when I look at Kanye West, isn't he mentally ill? And isn't that what the narrative background to him is? Well, well yeah, Dave Chappelle, the stand-up comic, made that point. Like, a, a few people have said, because I thought this before the great Dave Chappelle said it, <laughs> but uh, that, that, oh, well, you know, the mental illness is not an excuse. Actually, it kind of is. Yeah. Like, you can get off criminal c convictions if you're, you're murders if you're, you're insane. I just heard, I just looked at another clip of Kanye and he was talking about all these black performers that had to sacrifice a child. And he was talking about Bill Cosby's son because Bill Cosby's son was shot on a freeway years ago and things like and he, and he went through a list of all these black people that lost their son as if there was some sort of sacrifice that happened. This is a guy that's completely off his head. There's no doubt about it. I mean, he needs care. And, you know, this is not a normal person just... Yeah, I, I think this is a person that's in, in probably in, in need of a, a, a stay in a... Um, a mental institution. Of course he does. I mean, well, yeah, for, while, for yeah. God's sake, he, he, involved himself, he involved himself with King Gardassian on well, Just alone, that would have done it. Um, but <laughs> uh, can I just say, uh, uh, though, going back, so he's mm. been banned from New Zealand, right? You think that that interferes with free speech? You think that interferes yeah. with the intercourse of ideas? Um and I guess his songs prior to his banning uh, were those, even if he was arguing that Jewish people were bad in his songs, uh, does would you be opposed to him being played then? 
Well, I guess it depends on the content, really. It, like, if he was... I mean, I'm more on the absolutist end, and not everyone on, on the Free Speech Union necessarily... You know, we, we, we have debates about this kind of stuff. Not everyone's on the same page all the time. Um, uh, if, if there's no call for incitement... Um, uh, to you know, to violence, then uh, I would I would be permissible, uh, more permissible of it. I mean, in the states, there would, there are Nazi punk bands that would be producing that stuff, and they have the First Amendment, and that's out there. I, I you know I don't know if we can say that it's. I mean, I feel personally that most people would hear it and and they would just turn off themselves. I, I think we we self regulate in those situations. Can I then take I you to another case that might be a bit more problematic? Yeah. Uh, Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. um, I don't think yeah. he's banned yet, but we all know his background and uh, stuff. I think like he did get removed for a while, and he might have just slipped back into some of these. Because that, that can often happen. They get banned for a while, and then they just kind of ease, the, ease some of the songs back in. You know? And then another one would be Gary Glitter. Yeah. You know? Oh, I thought, had some great fun songs in the 70s, and now you can't play them because... He got convicted of child sexual abuse. Yeah. Mind you, you could have done The well, Who, and Peter Townsend on that one too, but, hey, they still play The Who. Well, there's a lot of... Um, uh, there's a lot of artists that have probably done some pretty rotten things, yeah. a lot of novelists. Um, yeah, well, yeah, I mean... Let's try that, Jerry Lee Lewis, know, Great Balls of Fire. Yeah. So if we ban yeah. people because we don't like who they are as people or their actions... Does that, that mean that this, their art, whether it's uh, music, whether it's painting, uh, whether it's writing, whether it's television work, redeems them or we judge it upon its artistic merits, not upon who produces it? I think you need to look at art separate from the artist. I, I think music, once it's released upon the world, is its own beast anyway. You know, we appropriate it. Like, for instance, there are songs... Uh, like there's a great song um, uh, from the seventies called I think it's called Shannon. Yes, uh, great song about it, the dog swimming out, not coming back yeah. again. Maybe, Very sad. Maybe you could sing it. Maybe you could sing it for the for the people. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's quite it's quite a, a falsetto, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, it's actually about a it's actually about a a guy's dog that Correct. dies, isn't it? Drowning. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I never knew that until I heard an interview with the songwriter, and I thought, oh, that. How funny is that? I just thought it was a really emotional love song. Well, it mm. kind of is for a dog, though, not a woman. Mm. Um, but, but, you know, you, we imbue art like that with our own meaning anyway. You know, I, I, and, and, you know, maybe this is because I'm from the, in the arts myself. I just, I, I don't really think it belongs to the artist anymore when you let it, let it free on the world. It gets reinterpreted, interpreted. Well, I mean, back to Shakespeare, how many versions of these plays have you seen or, or, or can be done? I mean, it's, it's endless. Yes. So, I yes. mean, there's that for me. Well, and, um, and there's the other thing. You know, one might, well, just you've talked about it, ban the Merchant of Venice on the basis that you believe that um, Sherlock has been portrayed with a series of Jewish tropes attached to him. But anyhow, uh, Dennis Wilson from the Beach Boys dog. Yeah. Oh, it was the, oh, it was his dog that died. And Henry Gross wrote the song. Oh, I didn't know that. Did you know that, Dane? I, I didn't know that, but I've been hammering a Dennis Wilson album lately. Oh, there you go. Um, well, it was his called, dog that swam out, Shannon, and died, and, and the exploitation Dennis, of, of, of Henry Gross to come along and write a best-selling song yeah. about it. <laughs> I must, we must play that today. Yeah. Hey, Dane, thank you. I mm. wanted to get your... So, so in essence, your argument is don't ban people you disagree with because um, aspects of their work survive even them. Um, I, I, I do agree with that, but I will add to that, and this is another thrust of the, the piece, is that if his argument is Jewish control and all of a sudden millions of fans can't find his music that they used to love yeah good point in the neck. yeah i see this what is you mean the point. yeah we get it in the neck and yeah. this is the part of censorship people never want to talk about they, yeah. they'll say there's consequences for speech it's like sure there are consequences for censorship 
who gets it in the even the hate speech laws that are coming up you know i've seen these people on some of even our threads they'll say oh this is all about protecting the muslims you know they really believe that this minority group has undue power over the government i.e over them it, it actually sets it, it puts a very bad narrative out there and so we need to talk this stuff out. Agreed. We, we, we need to talk this stuff out. Censorship, and, and like I was saying earlier, a lot of people that are in this space and choosing censorship, I don't think they've really been personally affected by a lot of this racism. You've got to be pragmatic about this stuff. Yeah. You know? No. That, that's my view. Dane, thank you very much for sharing it with us. Um, I wish you well.